let's unpack what this technology is that they acquire with Maxwell. Tesla very rarely acquires companies. And when they do, it's because they have a key piece of technology and a breakthrough. And Elon Musk's on the record at on Third Row podcast that I was on being like, this is a huge deal. So what DBE, dry battery electrode, dumb it down for us in the simplest terms. Like what is this innovation and why, you know, you just said it can make the production line pump out way more batteries um, than mm -hmm. what the tech Panasonic is using. So what is this tech that Tesla has acquired and why does it matter? All right, there's uh, there's a lot of different facets to the technology. Sorry, we could do hard we could question. do it. Uh, it's uh, it's not a hard question, but it's a question we could talk about just this one for about an hour. There's so many different facets to it. So, um, it. probably the simplest way to start off is explain basically what it is. Uh, currently, batteries use what's called a wet slurry technology to coat the electrodes, uh, the electrode foils for a, a battery. Um, what they do is they mix a super toxic solvent in with some binder, with some carbon, um, and with the active material. And then they run it through a drying line. And those drying lines are hundreds of feet long and consume huge amounts of energy. Uh, with a dry cell process, they uh, use just uh, the binder and uh, the carbon material and the active material, they mix that together and it kind of forms a dough or like a bubble gum and they run that through um, like an extruder and it forms these flat sheets. So there's no drying necessary. Um, do you have any more questions about that? Because I can go into the benefits of what that is next. No, no, go, go for the benefits. Okay. All right. So currently when they do the wet sl slurry coating process, um, it's it causes degradation in the battery. That toxic solvent I was talking about, it's not good for the battery either. And a battery is a, a closed system. So um, any degradation that you have in that closed system compounds over time. The way Shirley P uh, Mung puts it is, uh, it's like compound interest. Um, so that's something you appreciate. Uh, so if you just have like a 0.001% degradation, um, that's gonna be, that's going to accumulate over time and it's going to rapidly reduce your battery life. Exactly. And why does it compound? Because the whole thing is about, I have to recharge and recharge my electric vehicle every day. So the yeah. big metric is like, how many cycles can I get out of that battery? And that's mm -hmm. what Elon Musk has said. We're hitting on the buzzword million mile battery. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be one of the headlines that comes out of what is this Maxwell? It's not mm -hmm. only a better and simpler and easier way to produce batteries, but it actually results in a better battery as well. It's this double edged approach and the the, mm -hmm. the better the battery is uh, we can talk about cost because i think it's going to probably win there too but just lasting longer is huge and that's what elon musk mm -hmm. was saying like for the robo taxi the battery's got to do 100 a million miles it does 300 to 500 thousand now so it would almost double and if you think about you know total cost of ownership over the life of vehicle that has some pretty big implications uh this there's some my mind's going about 10 different directions at once okay one thing that i haven't discussed on my channel is there's potentially a compounding effect here because jeff don has created that million mile battery with a wet slurry technology now if you combine that with a dry cell technology which is supposed to double to your cycle life as well uh, if those two have a compounding effect you could have <laughs> um, maybe potentially in, in excess of four thousand cycle life um, Jeff Don's battery, one thing that people miss about that million mile chemistry, Elon has said several times to charge your battery between 30 and 70%, so right about there. Because once you get towards the edges, it starts to degrade. Uh, with Jeff Don's battery, it doesn't experience that at all. So you can use the full 100, zero to 100% charge with no degradation. It's pretty much bulletproof. Wow. And so um, back to this Maxwell technology. So without this drying oven step, I've looked at a diagram of the actual gigafactory of Panasonic's part, and that's a huge mm. amount of the square footage. And yeah. so without that square footage, it's like we could still have this huge factory, but we can squeeze in way more battery production lines. And that's why all of a sudden the framing of is it a gigafactory, more like a terrafactory because mm. of that efficiency. Like, so it's like we're all these weird clues that Elon stated almost like mm. add up and you can like backwards engineer them to like oh this is all of this is back to that dbe um mm -hmm. yeah and so i'm, I'm uh, curious about a, a cost perspective unless you had something mm -hmm. else to, to go into well what i would say on that front is uh yes that compression of the manufacturing line helps a lot but the the drying lines are just one small part of many different areas there's the formation steps there's um i would say that this would maybe shrink 
the total battery manufacturing line, including all the different steps, by maybe 10 or 20%, rather than by that full 16X, because that's just for that one part of the battery manufacturing process. Where the dry battery electrode helps the most is the fact that it, it may be able to multiply the speed of the line rather than um, how much space it takes up in the factory. Okay, so a sense. slight improvement in space, but the speed, because you physically don't have to wait for it to dry, is the, with the is that a big piece of it? Yes, exactly. Coming back around to some of um, the benefits of Maxwell's technology. I was saying before that uh, it's about 90% active material with uh, a wet slurry and 5% binder and carbon material. Uh, what Maxwell's technology should be able to allow, allow from the research papers I've found is that should be able to drop to about 2% inactive materials. So um, you're getting much closer to the theoretical energy capacity that you were asking about earlier.